We are back. It is October 6, 2011, on this Thursday edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Less than 24 hours before, we occupy the Fed all over the United States. Now, a few months ago, um, I interviewed Danny Panzella, and he had gone out with his baby and protested the Fed, and then that caused the discovery to come forth that the Newark police were spying on Facebook and other systems and had called out 50 plus officers to literally encircle the Fed because one evil person uh, with their child uh, dared to come out and talk about the private banking oligarchy that ran this country. Then I interviewed him uh, and they had hundreds of people uh, show up at his next event there at Wall Street and since then uh, he came up with his, the idea to occupy the Fed. Uh, and of course, I, I, I wanted to get him on about the fact that he's gotten some media attention and it shows what, what one man can do when you start taking action. As Martin Luther King said, the universe uh, bends towards justice. Uh, and uh, he said, oh yeah, we had the idea weeks ago to occupy the Fed and told him about the website when I just separately thought we've got to occupy the Fed instead of, instead of occupying, you know, just saying capitalism is bad when the global monopoly cartel is actually the enemy of free market and capitalism and so i wanted to get him on uh, the show tonight here at infowars nightly news and prisonplanet.tv let's go to a short compilation of him out there with his baby uh, strapped strapped to his chest uh, as a father i've done that with my three children so sweet uh, with the police around him and then we'll show his dylan radigan interview and then when he was on judge Andrew napolitano's show on fox business the point is this is an example of how you can get involved and take action as well let's go ahead and go to that clip thomas jefferson said i believe that banking institutions are more dangerous to our liberties than standing armies The Federal Reserve is a metaphor for value, for wealth creation. And instead of having an economy that's based on working together to solve problems to create value and wealth, we have a banking system that invents it for the benefit of those who want to preserve power for themselves. And Wall Street protester Danny Penzella. Danny, to you first. What are the protests about? What do you and, other, the, and the other protesters want? Well, I think that for the most part, uh, the protesters are looking for freedom and equality. And uh, they have a little bit of a different view on how to get there than the Tea Party does. If you cut through the rhetoric, some of the goals are, are really the same. The power of the individual is as powerful as the universe is infinite, Tom Hanks. And of course, there's the Mahatma Gandhi quote uh, about the fact that uh, in all of us is the seed of the universe. Now. Danny Penzella has been going out there and trying to educate the Occupy Wall Street people. It's a very diverse group, but as I said a week ago, it's now been confirmed, the Democrats are trying to occupy it. They're trying to take it over and spin it that Obama's fighting the corruption of Wall Street when he's totally financed by the private Federal Reserve corrupt elements of it. You see, the Federal Reserve, as we talked about last night with G. Edward Griffin, he's going to be joining us again tomorrow night, is waging war against true diversity and the true free market. And Danny has been breaking that down. Danny, great to have you here with us this evening. It's always a pleasure, Alex. So you've been out there today, yesterday. You're about to go back out later tonight. Uh, what does Occupy Wall Street really stand for? Or is it just a, a diverse group? It's a very diverse group, and I think you can see that it's evident in the list of demands. There's kind of this kind of hodgepodge of, of some of it's even silly. And the reason that is is because they have this group of grassroots activists that are all coming together, and they vote on every single thing they do. It's a, it's a true grassroots democracy. So, you know, and they're trying to be all inclusive of all these ideas. Um, it definitely is weighed towards the left. Uh, you know, I'm not going to pretend that it isn't, but there is a strong showing of libertarians, of anarcho-capitalists, of many different, uh, there's even a bunch of Ron Paul uh, Republicans down there. So uh, there's a lot of people that are there and there's a lot of ideas being exchanged and the media is absolutely lying about what is happening here. And that goes for both the left and the right wing media. The right wing media, I heard Sean Hannity today talking about how this is a Soros funded thing and that's designed to get 
get the right to say, well, I'm not going to get involved with that. And that that prevents the left and the right uh, at the grassroots level from uniting and coming together against the real enemy, the Federal Reserve. So and that's just like the Tea Parties where three, four years ago it was just libertarian freedom. Republicans came in and took it over. Uh, MSNBC said they're all racist, so if you're not white, well, you can't be for ending the Federal Reserve or ending the wars like the original Tea Party was. Uh, so again, it's about divide and conquer, and so now there's a Occupy Wall Street movement that doesn't have all the answers, that's diverse. Soros comes in, the president comes in, they don't really speak for him, but the mainstream media plays into it on both the left and right, again, to engage in that divide and conquer. That's right. And because these are not professional protesters, these are grassroots people, they get a little starstruck. Mike Moore shows up and they think, oh, we're going to get some press coverage now. So they let him speak. And then the media puts Mike Moore forth as he's as if he's the voice of Occupy Wall Street. And of course, like he told Luke, I don't want to worry about the Fed. That's we need to get rid of capitalism. Here's he's what he's a capitalist. He's the not Fed pushes to get rid of capitalism. Right. They want a centrally planned economy, and that's my argument. When I'm talking one-on-one -on -one with these people down there, they say, well, the free market caused this. I said, well, we don't have a free market. We have a centrally planned economy run by a private banking cartel. And light bulbs start to go off in their heads, and they start to realize, and we are, we are making real progress down there. So I've been doing that since day one. The, the uh, Occupy Wall Street protest started, and the movement, the libertarian, or well, the free market movement has been growing ever since, and there's more more and more people coming down and just taking part in conversations all day long during the Occupy Wall Street uh, be between marches and protests. They have these forums where they just have economic and political uh, discussions. And we need free market people in those forums sharing the, the ideas of liberty uh, that have resonated in the hearts of men for all time uh, to inspire men to fight for their freedom. So uh, the Occupy the Fed movement was just a way for us to capitalize on the momentum that Occupy Wall Street has and shift it back because the, the uh, establishment left is working really hard. Sending, they sent 50,000 union people down there yesterday to co-opt it and direct it back towards the establishment right. And we are down there fighting every day. That's to make right. Sure I was talking to Luke uh, because we, nobody could talk to him. People that thought that he brought a group down to the Fed and that he'd been arrested there, but it was actually b before that even happened. And, and, and now we've learned that Luke and others, and he was saying a lot of the people, almost a majority, close to half were like, yeah, we should protest the Fed. But the union leaders and the little yell leaders, they were able to know, let's just direct it off against capitalists and which is exactly what the globalists want, more taxes on the middle class to pay it in banker bailouts. And that's why this is so key that we actually occupy Federal Reserve uh, structures around the country, uh, you know, around uh, their property line on city streets in Dallas tomorrow. I'm going to be there. I'm calling for folks to stay there and demand media attention. Uh, it caused a bunch of people today to go there and turned out it was like 600 reported and there was just massive media coverage. Uh, and I'm now learning that there have been other Occupy the Fed movements, people spontaneously having this idea uh, in Boston and other areas. And that's something the Federal Reserve can't deal with. I'm sure you saw two, three weeks ago, alternative media had it. But now last week, Forbes first reported on the mainstream corporate media that the Federal Reserve is making a list of people that criticize it. And, and that's a form of intimidation. I mean, this is such a joke. And I'm sure that me and my son are at the top of that list, uh, but that's not going to silence us. I'm not going to stop. We are at a, a, a moment in history right now, and we need to choose, and the Tea Party and everyone else needs to choose are you going to are you going to let your ego get in the way and say I'm not going to work with a leftist or I'm not going to work with a communist or I'm not going to work with a tea party or are you going to let your ego stand in the way of real change because we have the opportunity now to join forces this is an issue the fed is an issue that both the left and the right can get behind are we going to join forces forces and go against this criminal cartel or are we going to allow them to to use ego to divide and conquer us and yet another revolution is going to diminish into nothing well Dan uh, look, true liberty, the ideas of freedom, the ideas of controlling your own local area, this is much more inviting, much more uh, alluring and, and, and successful historically than the tired old Soviet or communist or collectivist systems. And I've been criticized for having a Roseanne Barr on or 
and Ed Asner on. But the point is, they're starting to listen to my show. They're starting to say, I like Ron Paul. Well, I do get that the mega banks want their own form of socialism to make people dependent. And they're starting to really listen to us. We have the superior ideas. And when the establishment left says, don't go to a tea party, they're all racist to the left, that's because the system is scared of people coming together. When the establishment right says, don't go down to these events, well, even if it was a bunch of communists, which it isn't on average, so what? Go down and engage them. Go down and treat them like human beings and really discuss things. I mean, there isn't a liberal I have talked to who won't wake up when you explain the true history of gun control, who won't actually get into it. And that's why the gun control lobby's falling apart and being reversed. And the ATFs are probably going to get abolished. And it turns out they're a bunch of narcotics traffickers shipping guns all over Latin America to knock out competition. Uh, the DEA, the FBI, they're all involved. This is a wake-up call. And the only hope the establishment has is playing us off against each other. And they're experts at it. You know, when I came out a week ago and said, I've looked at this. It's got Soros all over it. They're calling for socialism. Well, that was the media focusing on that. But at the same time, it was important for me to say, hey, let's not make that the grassroots movement against the Fed. The Fed saying, throw me in the briar patch. You know, please don't throw me in it. That's where they want to go. I wasn't saying people protesting Wall Street and its excesses of corruption were bad. I was saying, hey, let's go after the real problem, the Federal Reserve that dominates and controls Wall Street and that's consolidating it. Uh, in closing... I'm very optimistic. I mean, the, the, the private Federal Reserve is so outrageous. Uh, they had to operate as a fraud, saying they were federal for 98 years. And as soon as they're exposed as the Ponzi scheme fraud, elaborate scam they are, it's game over. No amount of police state is going to save them. Now, what comes out of this in the next few years to come, uh, that sometimes you can have a revolution and something worse comes. Uh, so that's why now it's important that we do occupy the private Federal Reserve and really point out that it is the mega corporations using collectivism. Uh, what's your view on the future and what it holds? Well, I think that we're going to find out. Uh, I'm calling for the Tea Party and Occupy Wall Street to join forces. Put down your egos because we can do this. It is game over for the Fed if both grassroots movements merge together and fight against that enemy and once we cut off that leash that's the leash around congress's neck if we cut off that that leash of the federal reserve now they're not going to they they won't have the power over congress that they do the congress will finally start to represent we the people because really that's the reason both the tea party and occupy have stood up they 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 feel like they have been disenfranchised and only the top one percent are represented and it's true so we need to join together and work against the real enemy not be distracted by the media because the media on both sides you're going to start to see now even the left media is going to come out and demonize the occupy wall street uh, protests as if if they start to attack the real enemy which is the federal reserve the fed's going to make up make phone calls to all those ceos who run those media companies and you're going to start seeing all those people who were who were supporting uh the Occupy Wall Street, Olbermann and some of the others are going to get shut down or shut up. Exactly. So it is grassroots. The systems try to take it over from the left, like the establishment right, trying to take over the Tea Party. And if they're not successful, they're going to demonize it. And they've already tried to demonize it by having the right say it is pure Soros. And then people misrepresenting what I've said and other things, saying, no, there's an attempted takeover. That doesn't mean it's Sorosian. It means that there's an attempted takeover there. And it just shows how 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 complex uh, all of this is and uh, from what i'm seeing from our reporters and others we are winning the fight to wake them up to go after the fed and so get ready for that demonization uh, to really kick into high gear well That's danny right. thank you so much for spending time with us look forward to to talking to you soon in just a few months from you out there by yourself with your baby uh, to now having an even bigger effect you're another testament to the power of the individual that's right thank you so much alex and that's what it's all about, individualists coming together to fight the collectivist and the hive Borg. Well, that's it for this edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Aaron Dykes is going to be sitting in tomorrow while I'm up in Dallas for Occupy the Fed there. And then folks are going to stay there uh, over the weekend as I leave to get media attention. I'm going to travel to Houston at high noon uh, and to speak for several hours at the Federal Reserve. And the, and the address is all on InfoWars.com. 
and, and they're on your screen. And then I'll travel to speak um, Sunday morning, 10 a.m. to noon, uh, there in San Antonio at that branch of the Federal Reserve uh, Bank of Dallas. And all over the country, people are really getting excited about this, marching on the enemy itself. It's taken many years to identify the globalists, to identify the private Federal Reserve banking cartel, and now it's an idea whose time has come.